Happy Monday. Good evening, everybody. Um, episode 56, Club Talk Sports live show, Usual Suspects. My name Danny Torres, Brandon Hernandez, and Giancarlo Moreira. I was during the, during the countdown, man, I wanted you to keep the Marlins hat on. I was about to say, the guy, the person you've been seeing at the Marlins games, Mr. Marlin, there, there he is right there. Look, there he is. Let's believe it. Sandy got robbed for a starting spot. Sandy got robbed for a starting spot, but he's still we're still in, in Los Angeles, though, representing. Yeah, I mean, you're Jaka. I know I know Jaka would say, hey, let's start Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's great. Happy Monday, guys. Uh, Plug Talk Sports Show. Um, let's get into our uh, – let's start with bad news this week. Last time we started with good news. Um Worst thing you saw in the past week. Uh, let's switch it up, Janka. Let's go with you. Uh, worst thing. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, worst thing. Worst thing. Hmm. I don't know. It's tough. Uh, what happened? Last week? What happened? Da, 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 da. Um, Brandon, you go. I, I'll, I'll come over with something. It's like the SAT, bro. I don't know what happened last week. <laughs> Try and go, man. So um, I don't know how bad it is, but you know, because you know, we all are into Miami fans. But the fact that Lewandowski is going to be playing in Miami, but it won't be an inter Miami jersey, though. So to see him over there on yeah. the pitch, it was probably the worst thing because it's like, man, David Beckham three years ago, we're gonna get Messi, Ronaldo, these type of players, and at the same time, I get to see Gareth Bell over there in the LAFC. Now, I mean, even Golski's going to be playing in Miami, but he wouldn't have played for the, you know, the pink parents. I mean, it, it, it kind of breaks my heart for tomorrow's game, but that's probably the worst thing, you know. Can't complain too much. Jonka, are you finally... Uh... I think so. Uh, I guess it would have to be LeBron in the Drew League. I think that's like the worst thing I've ever seen. Because no one's talking about... How... Wait, 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 not too many details. We're getting into okay, this... I, I... I'm just saying I didn't I didn't like he, he, he played terrible. I was just saying that he played terrible. Keep your opinion for the first topic. Um, for me it was it was my birthday week last week and uh, I had a cold, um, so it kind of sucked. Which I, to be honest, at the beginning I thought it was COVID, and I tested like five times and they were all negative. Uh, so thankfully it wasn't COVID, but it still kind of sucks on your birthday week to not be able to breathe properly through your nostrils. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a crappy, crappy week because of being uh, sick with a cold. Um, let's go plug the week. Best thing, Janka, best thing that you saw last week. Well, I know you didn't have confidence in them, but Inter Miami coming back from a 2-0 deficit, I, I always tell Daniel, you have to believe and look what happened. I was even shocked myself. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Daniel says it was luck. I say destiny. It was luck. It was luck. I don't know. I mean, and honestly, the first goal was luck. Who scores within a minute? You know what I mean? So, Any team that plays against Inter Miami? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> you know, we've seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... But still, but still, I mean, not gonna lie, Jonathan kind of like you know spilled the words out of my mouth. That's probably gonna be also my my good plug. But if I was gonna go away from that, I would have to say, and you know, for those college football fans out there, we got media days. All right, last week we had the Big Twelve. Now we have the SEC media days. We just saw Lane Kiffin go off on NIL deals and. Like the 20th and as well as the 21st, I think Miami and the ACC is going to be out there. So glad we're back for it, you know, first time I think since COVID. So in person. You know, you read my mind, Brandon, because that was actually, man, man. it was going to be about college football. And I would say what's a good thing for me. It would be, you know, when you hear it, you'd be like, oh, this, this, this is not a good thing. But for me, it is. Um, UM joining the SEC. The reason why it's a good thing for me is because I'd enjoy them getting clapped every single week. 
of the season. I would love Miami to join the SEC. They would get clapped every single week. I don't know. They would have the Mickey Mouse, you know, the oh boy, Mickey Mouse schedule that they have against, you know, like Bethune Cookman and all these other schools that they schedule that they go 4 0. Oh, oh, the U's back, the U's back. And then, you know, then they start playing real teams and then they choke. I don't know, man. I mean, because honestly, I've been hearing about Clemson and Florida State trying to make a push for the SEC. But, I mean, what about a one-team squad? I mean, Vanderbilt and the SEC, no one talks about them for a great reason. You know what I mean? Switch them with UN, maybe. Maybe switch in Missouri. You know, Mizzou, they want to call them over there. I mean, UN could play the SEC. It's a possibility. They might get absolutely clobbered by Arkansas. But, I mean, hell, I'm used to the television once in a while. Oh, I love you, Brad. But at the same time, though, since the SEC is harder, if Miami does win those games, those are quality wins, which the college football playoffs will look at. Yeah. Since you're would, claiming... Would, if, since you're, since you're, yeah, if, that's what I'm saying. You never know. Lots of loss, win, draw, whatever. But if you're saying the ACC is so trash, then if you go to the SEC and win, I don't want to hear any excuses. Well, I mean... I mean, because I know we're getting a little bit off topic because I would love to stick on this for a while. I mean, the ACC, you know, they have Pittsburgh. I mean, Wake Forest had a pretty good season last year, went to the uh, championship the conference. And Clemson, I mean, they have won national titles recently. So, I mean, the ACC has some things. Obviously, the SEC is in a whole different tier. Just on my But the ACC is building. I just got to say it like that. I don't know about you, Em, but the ACC has a conference. I just will say, though, lately, now that before Crystal Ball, we haven't seen what he does. But Miami has had a trash coach every single time. Yeah, I just want to say Brandon finds the nicest way to insult you. Like he'll insult you, but in a, in a proper way. Like he'll put the words all together to like pat it to make you feel like you're not like being attacked to make you feel bad and question your integrity as a person. But he still laid the he still laid the dagger there, low key. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. You, know, you, just, can't, you just can't go full throw on some of those issues. You just can't, especially for the U. You gotta protect the U. Okay, let's let's get into uh, let's get into the first topic of the week and something Janka's very, uh, I guess, outspoken and passionate about, and it is the Drew League. LeBron pulled up to the Drew League, and uh, we all saw how that was. There was not a seat left available uh, to be able to watch. I think the league, DeMar DeRozan, pulled up to the Drew League as well. Um, Janka, express your frustration on LeBron at the Drew League. Listen, the problem with, that I have with LeBron playing the Drew League is that he that these LeBron fans and LeBron himself always say, oh, I never have time off in the offseason. But yet, there he is, playing the Drew League with all these pros, and yet he's trying to get Kyrie to play the Drew League, but somehow the NBA is not looking at this as tampering. How is it not tampering? <laughs> not a single word has been said about tampering, but yet he's been talking to Kyrie, which is on another team, to get him to go to the Lakers. I'm sorry. How has Ron not been, like, legit? But so whatever, bro. It's like... The league wants LeBron to succeed, but LeBron is such an idiot. He's in his, what, 21st or 20th season? He's yeah, getting old. Does. And every year I hear, oh, he never has time off. He's always banged up. He can never recover. But yet he's there playing with all these players in the Drew League. Now he's decided, right? What happens to time off then? Middle of Mr. Time, right? The time is always undefeated. Well, I mean, I don't know about time being undefeated or not, but this is the first time we've seen the Drew League since 2011. The fact he dropped 42 points in this one on some randoms, and I mind you, the Drew League's been going, I believe, since the 1970s. You know, you got players like Lamar Rosen, who's a Los Angeles native, and then you go off for, I think, Kobe Bryant played in it as well. You got, I mean, there's huge names in this league that always show up. I mean, Nick Young was a star for, I mean, you know, a good two years in the Drew League, so... See LeBron drop 42 for the first time showing up after 11 years? That's ridiculous. And I love it because I was also thinking about it. Because the NBA actually showed uh, like a little bit of a, like a background cam where it was kind of like clustered up with like a bunch of fans kind of blocking the view trying to get a peek of LeBron. Yeah. They talk about an in-season tournament. What if making an association with the Drew League 
to get at least something, like a street ball type of tournament in the middle of the season. I'd rather have that than some sort of like real tournament for a bunch of trophy. You know what I mean? And just some guys in the Drew League jump. But um, you say he scored how many points? 42? 42. 42. 42. But then what, what they don't say is that he went 2 for 13 from 3 and missed the, the, free, the free throw to go to overtime. It's like, oh, typical LeBron again. He tries to show up, but yeah, he makes all these layups and all these things that mean nothing because he can't make his free throws. He's pathetic. Well, we can't, we can't just criti- criticize LeBron on a free throw at a Drew League game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, even, you know what? Best example, Kane Pritchard, before last season, dropped 92 in his tournament in Oregon. 92. Name another person that's expected to drop 92 points. I don't know. I don't know if I'm points. <laughs> I do on 2K. <laughs> Game sliders? Hey, I just, you know, it's funny. I, I saw this around Twitter a lot. They're like, this is how much Steph has influenced the game. LeBron pulling off the same moves during warm-ups that Steph does and trying to hit threes. He's doing that during warm-ups, yet goes two for 13 from the three-point line. <laughs> hey, man. I mean, look, yes, it was impressive. He got 42 points in the Drew League, but nothing, nothing, and I say nothing, comes close to Kevin Durant at Rucker Park. Yeah, yes. that, was, that was nice. Yes. Nothing touches that. Yes, I, mean, I still remind myself about the clips and going like, you know, you know, cross, cross, fade away three. I mean, the guy was just unstoppable at Rucker Park, man, but... Actually, better yet, what if possible, Kevin Durant versus LeBron James in the Drew League? Oof. That could be a possibility. They already got, you know, the Rosa has his own team over there. I mean, they're obviously having, as he said before, Nick Young, who Brian, he, you know, was known to play during his career. It's a possibility. Katie just got to do over there because he's been kind of dark. I mean, for a Drew League return. You, you know, know what? You know what, bitch, I've been dying for years now to be released? Is when KD and LeBron went head to head during the offseason, the lockout in football. Mm-hmm. I would love to see that. That footage has never been shown. I would love to see that. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. Who knows? KD might have been, you know, the world's lengthiest wide receiver. Who would have known? Who would have Bro, I think LeBron, if he would have been the tight end, he'd be the greatest tight end. With those hops? I don't know. I mean, that's the real question. LeBron or Gronkowski, that's the real question for tight end. Are we going to put LeBron in that level? LeBron's got the speed and the hops, but he, does he have the durability, though? That's the real question. So I, I was confused. So, like, I really, I thought that Kyrie Irving was going to play in the Drew League. I, that's what I thought was happening with LeBron. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the Drew League itself, because, I mean, a lot of it is. You know, as usual, suspects, Kyrie Irving. I mean, he, I haven't really heard anything recently about him going back and forth to Drew League. I know that, you know, he's been doing like a basketball camp here and there for some of the kids during the summer. But Kyrie Irving has shown up at a couple of summer league games, especially watching the Los Angeles Lakers. Yep, yeah. yeah. So, so that specifically, that's kind of the most I got right now in the Kyrie watch for those that are interested. But Kyrie and the Drew League, I mean, you know, the Drew League, I mean, it's still a game going on. It's not too late. It's not too late to see maybe Kyrie. You know what I would love to see? Kyrie against Russell. Kyrie against Russell Westbrook. Let's just double check exactly who actually deserves the contract. <laughs> well, apparently, apparently today, on a phone call, it was LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and Anthony Davis were all on a three way phone call today to reassure their commitment to each other to make this work. So, like, this offseason has been so weird because it's like, what is going on? Like, what's going to happen? Like, are you committed to here? Are you committed to there? Like, what's going on? Oh, yeah. I mean, plus, I mean, as I said before, you know, I just feel like it's going to be a hostage situation in Brooklyn. I feel like Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are not going to be moved at all. If there is going to be a trade, it's got to be made in the season because, I mean, I mean, their trade value is just dropping. I mean, obviously, besides Kevin Durant, but, I mean, with Aiden coming back to Phoenix, it's like, 
you don't really got a lot of seniors out there. You know, not a lot of teams are going to be making that that huge trade, which would be obviously you know a young all star, you know a couple of role players, and maybe even better yet, I mean a finishing piece in your starting lineup. That's kind of the blueprint. I don't know how many people are going to do that. I mean, it might be a hostage situation with Sean Marks. You know, and then, I'm sorry. If that's the case, then I'm sorry. Then I'm calling BS and the bluff of Sean Marks and the Brooklyn Nets because they came up with this whole thing. We're going to work with KD to get him to where he wants to go. That's BS. Because if they would have want to work with KD where he wants to go, he would have been gone already. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's ridiculous what they're asking. You know, no team is going to give them that. So they're like, oh, okay, I guess not. We're just going to keep him then. And so then... Why you want to keep a player that's just requested a trade that doesn't want to play for you? So then what's the point? Yeah, plus, I mean, the fact of, you know, no matter how the trade goes, Brooklyn's going to lose the trade regardless. I can't imagine a trade, even if you, you know, let's say Devin Booker, right, with his son, or for the Miami Heat, Tyler Hero, right, or, or, or vice versa, you know, any other team in their all-star. No matter what, it's Kevin Durant and dude. They're going to lose the trade no matter what. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just at this point, and this is we're already turning into the next topic, but I don't understand what because there's so many reports out there, and they're from really valuable sources coming out about what's going on. But it's like every day, or like yeah, every day, really, the things change, and you're like, what? Like today. They came out with a, a, a source came out saying that the Heat would package out a bio with Hero to get Durant. And I'm like, hmm. and I sent that to you as well, Brandon. Yeah. Like, I'm, that would be a three-way deal with like another team. I mean, because again, that was the whole discussion at the beginning of all this. It can't be Bam and part of the deal one-on-one with the Nets. Because, you know, the rookie extension and Ben Simmons also being on the Brooklyn roster. And you just can't have both of those guys in the same roster. Um, we saw today as well, actually, right before we hopped on the show, the Dallas Mavericks, the Heat wanted to trade Kyle Lowry uh, to the Dallas Mavericks to get two picks in return to have that in their arsenal. And then the Mavericks were like, oh, we want Kyle Lowry and bam. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> it's like, like, what is going on with that's this? A, that's a blasphemy. What is going on with this off season? Like, people were just like John said, blasphemy. Like, what's going on with the things that they're like asking? And you know what? It goes back. Rudy Gobert trade ruined everything. They say this from the beginning. They screwed the whole system up. Now since you gave Rudy Gobert for all, for Rudy Gobert, you gave like six picks and two players or whatever. Now it's all oh, Kevin Durant. The way better player. Now you offer him like triple that, and that's it. Now that you say, well, not a, like, it's like, dude. At this point, in talks like the Miami Heat, like I don't know, Gatorade boys, and talks would be thrown in there with like a draft pick. <laughs> it, it's on to we'll give you the entire FTX arena for Kevin Durant. Like, it's ridiculous yeah. what they want. We'll give you half the city of Miami for Kevin Durant. Like, you got to give up this game. Dolphin Mall, the IKEA right next to uh, the IKEA right next to 95, and then on top of all that, you might as well get rid of um, at least maybe Alonzo Mori as a front office. Who knows? It's literally like that's how it's working. They're asking for so much, and then every day the story changes on what's going to happen. You know, I think, and I, I saw as well uh, that the Nets felt lukewarm. The word was lukewarm about. The Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson and some picks. Uh, and at this time, and like at this point, the Heat are just playing like connect the dots. They're like, all right, well, we'll switch it to like another player plus some picks. No, nah, okay, we'll, we'll switch that player and we'll put this player and we'll put some picks. No, okay, then we'll switch it to another player. And it's like the same thing over and over again. And it's just, and that's what Brooklyn, the Utah situation, it's been. Like, there's been some news, and then it died out again. Then there was some news, and then now it's dead again. And then, like, there was news that he was very close to joining the New York Knicks at one point. No one knows what the hell is going on in Utah because, like, they, they traded Rudy Gobert. 
Then they're like, oh, we're building around Donovan Mitchell. Like, he's not for sale. And then, like, the next week, they're like, all right, we'll listen to offers for teams for Donovan Mitchell. And I'm like, uh, I'm very confused on where Utah is, like, leading. Like, they're not being clear. Like, no one here is being clear on what's happening. And it's very confusing. And every day, the story is changing. I don't know, but I mean, I'm telling you right now, they're on the brink of a rebuild. I don't know if Donovan wants to be a part of that. They are. In the, they are. I mean, they are going to be in a rebuild. And um, with the DeAndre Ayton situation, Phoenix matched the contract, which would leave it up to him. But I don't know if I've heard any word. Maybe I'm wrong. But is he staying or is he deciding yeah. to go? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the Indiana Pacers, you know, they offered him that $133 million deal. It was an offer sheet which had to be matched uh, by the Phoenix Suns within 48 hours because he's a restricted free agent. Within four hours, and believe it or not, because the entire free agency was always about, oh, are the Suns going to give him that contract? Are the Suns going to give him that contract? Within four hours, they matched the offer sheet and they signed him back. So Aiden is going to be back as a Sun, which is huge for their piece as a, uh, you know, a championship team. But... I mean, if it's not that long, and you have to be forced your hand by Indiana, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's just crazy to me. I'm, I'm not too positive, but maybe they were thinking about it. But yeah, Aiden will be back. Utah, obviously, in a break of a rebuild. And, I, and somehow, somewhere, I don't know how, but the New York Knicks are always in a mix with now Dolph Mitchell. They're always in a mix somewhere. I don't know how, but they ended up doing it again. I can see him in the, I can see him in the mix. Yeah, they've been doing them too. What do, you guys, what do you guys think is going to happen? Because obviously, Brand, Brandon's words, which are very true, Brandon's very right on this. The Heat have not re signed Tiger Hero. And that's for a reason. Extension, yeah. That is for a reason. The moment that you we get that notification or that source comes on to Tyler Hero is re signed, that, that means that they told her. Yeah, it's over. They weren't able to secure anything. But up till now, they haven't re-signed Tyler Hero. And uh, that means something. Like like you said, Brandon, that means something is, is more works. Good. It's good. But um, I'm telling you right now, because Tyler Hero, you know, I think, you know, the upcoming season, because he's going to be with, you know, the Miami Heat one more season. If nothing does happen, we'll be making only like five million, six million. The expansion of the Miami has to be above $25 million guaranteed, at least annually. He's not worth that. And I know from Jonathan's experience, he's not worth it, but that's what Tyler's looking at right now. Because he wants to start. He knows he's at, he's, at, he's claiming to be at a level of league. He's looking. He can dog shake and all those guys. So he wants to be a pain like those guys. And again, you know, good fan of the year, improves his game, potentially a starter, hopefully over Max Cruz. I hope that Eric looks past that. But, I mean, until a, a deal is done, Tyler Hero is still going to be, you know, the nail in the coffin floating in the air. Because he's going to be the only piece that the Miami Heat can use I mean, without Bam or Bio, obviously, due to those contract issues. And then Jimmy Butler is obviously not going to be a part of the deal. And I'm pretty sure Brooklyn is looking at Jimmy Butler as, you know, if he was a part of the deal, this deal would have been done. It would have been done if Jimmy Butler was part of the deal. But now they're looking at Tyler Hero and the surrounding cast for Kevin Owens. That, I feel like, is going to be, you know, it's not a guarantee, but it's both something that happened. But it's the number four, do you believe that Kevin Grant and Kyrie Irving will be part of the Nets organization on the season part? Yes. Yes. I, 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 me, personally, I really do like it. I feel it's a hostage situation. I really do feel like it is. So the beginning of November, uh, I'm gonna agree with Brandon. Sorry, Jack. Um, I'm mm -hmm. gonna agree with Brandon. Um, I don't, just don't see this going anywhere at the moment. Go ahead, Jack. No, I think so. The beginning of August, September, the end of October. So, like three, basically three full months until the new season, the season starts again. You think you don't think in those three months something will happen? No. By the time we reach October, for even like hell, even before the preseason games, they'll be announced. I don't know how, but they'll have to hash out, you know, whatever issues they had over there in that front office. And of course, the owners of Brooklyn. The Kyrie Irving idea is that 
owned the Dallas Mavericks and the Los Angeles Victory are the most idealistic trading options for spots because, you know, Dallas, I mean, I said it again, and I'll say it one more time, Spencer Dinwiddie could easily be a part of a trade deal with Kyrie Irving. Because Spencer Dinwiddie in a couple of picks, that's actually an even deal. You go over to Los Angeles, Westbrook, but that'd be included with, you know, maybe a couple of picks, but at the same time, the contract is so different. Annually, Westbrook getting paid about $11 million more than So, those teams can easily say no, because, you know, as Dennis said earlier today, that they were kind of, you know, being a full-blown phone call to 53 of Los Angeles. Dallas, I doubt, is going to be trying to move anybody because he had some success. So, Kyrie looks like he's going to stay in Brooklyn. Kevin Durant's still being shopped around with no avail. I mean, they're on contract. They're on contract and nobody wants them. It's, it's the only logical thing that they're going to Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. I just... I don't see him like the way it's gone. <laughs> like I think every team has put every logical like piece together to try to like go for Kevin Durant, and it's just been shot down every single time. And it's it's been left to dead water. And you know, I don't think it's going to change. To be quite honest, I don't think this is a time thing. I don't think over time Brooklyn's going to be like what they said no to. They're just going to say yes. I think that the deadlock and he's just gonna stay there and I don't know. Janka threw this up in the air one time, but like a couple weeks ago. Um, but he said unless Kevin Durant pulls uh, a Ben Simmons and just doesn't show up at training camp and um, and just doesn't just play at all. Just start playing, start missing game. And again, it could be a hostage situation, but I mean, Ben Simmons had to wait till basically the trade deadline, you know what I mean? So it'll be a long time to hear anything. Definitely a long time. Yeah. You were right. You, you at the beginning told me, uh, you were like, this is going to drag out all summer, and I think it is at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just, Kevin Durant is too good of a player to just say, yeah, we'll just do this right now you know what i mean i mean everyone's got to think about it everyone's got to think about it i, I mean even kevin around some real estate in my head throughout the entire summer for the free agency field i mean i just can't stop thinking about it it's the one thing i'm still waiting as an nba fan yeah got okay, any last touches on this topic how much do you think kd would have to spend to buy out his contract if he's like really like well, i want to get out of here not too positive, but it's going to be a huge number. I mean, not that would be an insane thought, though. You know how insane it would be to say that Kevin Durant hated to be in Brooklyn that much to pay more? I mean, it has to be at least around 300 plus million, maybe even close to four. I don't know how much is left, you know, anyone is contract with the entire thing, but to spend close enough to half a hundred million, no, I thought it half a billion dollars. To leave a city like Brooklyn, that's ridiculous. Because I know some people who would die to live in the New York area. You know what I mean? Just all that just to move up to the to the desert of Phoenix. I don't. You can't imagine that, man. I, I, th- I think it was Janka that sent me something. I don't know if he sent it to you, Brandon, but he sent it something about Ben Simmons and the. I'm telling you, all sorts of scenarios are coming up. Ben oh. Simmons and New York and Miami? Is that what you had sent me, Janka? Yeah, I'm sent to Ben right now. Uh, yeah, it says um, NBA scout says that Ben Simmons is salvageable in the Miami Heat system. So I guess like they think the Miami Heat could develop Ben Simmons into what he can be. Now, but you know what's the funniest thing though? Salvageable. That word. Salvage. Yeah, that's not even a guarantee for Miami roster. The Heat culture is a is a fifty fifty on Ben Simmons. Right now, the Heat roster is a trash can, and they're just picking out the ones that look clean enough to play. Right now, they're just trying to figure out, hey, we did it, we did it again. We just have to do it one more time, but this time, which other guys that look similar, you know? Find a P.J. Tucker for Camilo Anthony, you know? Airborne. Airborne. It's a possibility. You can buy him out, but, I mean, shoot. If you ask me, Miami, and it's not a good chance you can even keep this roster, but, I mean, a Kevin Durant piece would be nice. 
It'll be nice to see in South Beach. Oh, yeah. I, I'd be fine with Carmelo in Miami. No, I would love Carmelo. I have a friend that's a, like a huge Melo addict. He loves Carmelo Anthony. I'm telling you right now, if Melo goes off to South Beach, he better wear the number 15 when he comes here. He's got to wear the number 15. I know that belongs to Chalmers, I know, but he's got to wear the number 15. No Denver will. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's switch gears to football. I know this was a couple of weeks ago, but we didn't uh, address it and talk about it. But Baker Mayfield, traded by the Cleveland Browns. I think we kind of uh, expected this when we saw Cleveland pick up Deshaun Watson. I, I, I think we expected there wasn't going to be a battle for that position, that Baker was on his way out. Um, Baker has been traded to the Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. I actually think that's a positive thing for Carolina. Um, they had they had re-signed Cam Newton, I believe. And I think, is he still on the Carolina roster, or did he let go? Well, okay. He's not anymore. not anymore. However, they probably, and I, this is going to be a huge argument, they might have the deepest quarterback room right now in that division. In the We're talking about Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, all right, and I believe that was the same draft class as So you yeah. have those two, and you got Matt Corral, who is a phenomenal fan of Ole Miss. And honestly, the kid out from the Rebels should have been the number one pick, but it wasn't for his injuries against Baylor in that bowl game. So you got those three guys, and then I believe the last one, uh, T.J. Walker, who played, I forgot it was, XFL, or some, some like smaller type of league that only lasted for maybe a summer. But he was... A gunslinger there. So you got four guys, probably potentially the deepest in the South of a quarterback here. Anybody can start. I think the bigger Mayfield, I mean, sure, I think he's a favorite right now, but I like Sam Darnold. He was just a different scenario for him. You know, Bobby Anderson obviously is a vocal guy for him ever since they're in New York. I mean, even when they, I think it was um, under the NFL's uh, IG or Instagram where he's Anderson, you know, wide receiver. Takes it out, no, in a long, long line of O's uh, when Baker Mayfield got announced. So, you know, I think that locker room is still belongs to Sam Darnold, but I mean, either way, I love Matt Corral. And I just, I, I'm telling you, it's going to be a sneaky part for that four card position. So, who do you think, who do you think won and lost this trade? Was it Cleveland or Carolina in terms of winning and losing the trade? I'm Yeah. I think Cleveland definitely lost it. We're talking about Deshaun Watson. You know, when he was active, probably the top five NFL quarterback in the league. But now it's like, you know, you got all the legal stuff going on. You know, obviously the you know the reputation he brings over to Cleveland. And Baker Mayfield, I mean, I hate the fact that, you know, because it's not only Cleveland, there's also other places like, you know, the 49 that have this idea that and this quarterback could be so much better. Let's go out and get another guy. Your quarterback just brought you to probably one of the best seasons you've had in a long time. Like for Baker Mayfield, they went to the AFC Championship game against Kansas City. Yeah. And it was close for a good minute, too, in the fourth quarter. That I do not understand. You go through, a, like, what is it, 20 something quarterbacks for a whole carousel throughout this century? And you say, you know, it's a pretty good three or so years. Kind of give you better, you know. I mean, you're not looking at the right place in the depth chart. You're not even looking at. I mean, you should look at the defense of anything on the secondary. You know, you can add in a little more. But you know, Baker Mayfield hasn't really missed a beat. Let's want to call his injury prone season last year. So Cleveland, they definitely missed out. A lot of more questions over there in the Browns facility. That's a guarantee. I definitely think this is a win for Carolina. I think this is a good pickup for the Panthers, and it can make them competitive, I think, in my opinion. No, oh, very, especially in that division. I mean, that's a quarterback heavy division, if you ask me. Yeah. Danka? The one thing I would say about Baker Mayfield for in Carolina, they've, uh, he has a history of uh, his behavior has been always iffy with his head, with his head coaches. So hopefully, if he can maintain his composure. And when something he doesn't like happens, just stay calm and just continue with your life. Don't ruin the situation. You left Cleveland, which was a, a crap show. Well, now, 
now you're in a new team, new system, new bench, new everything. So let's try to get along, Baker, and you know, let's prove yourself that you're not that you're worth more than what TV was was giving you was actually the offering you. Like they wanted to get rid of you for Deshaun. Prove that you're better than Deshaun, and then make yourself look good. Okay. That's the one thing. That's the one thing that I could say about Baker Mayfield because I actually like him. I like his I like his game, but his attitude and his off the field stuff and the stupid State Farm commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what they need to do for the State Farm commercials? They gotta do a commercial now replacing Baker Mayfield. He walks out of the stadium, hands the keys to Deshaun, and says, "Oh yeah, all yours. Um, you know, enjoy it, whatever." Uh, the tenant, you know, they're okay people. They want to do with me, but I hope we hope the best for you. He walks off with another uh, big State Farm in the building. You know, they had an idea. Like he had an idea to do something like that, and they immediately were like, "No, we're not doing it." <laughs> that was <laughs> that was <laughs> It would have been cool. I, I, I gotta admit, it would have been cool. Um, another player, which honestly, I saw this. It was a fake account, but it would have been really cool, I think. Um, but I think his future has been in speculations in the Super Bowl. And that is Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, there was a fake Bleacher account with a lot of followers that said that he had signed with the Buffalo Bills. And according uh, according to OBJ, he had woken up from a nap and had like so many text messages from people. And he looked at his phone and he saw that. And he's like, "Did I just get traded?" But no, it was, it was it was fake. But I'm not gonna lie. Like OBJ and the Bills would be a that would be pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie. Like with the Buffalo would be nice in my opinion. Yeah, it would be a nasty team, but I mean. Will you really leave Los Angeles for the cold Buffalo air? That I can't see. That's I can't cool. imagine a lot of people going out of their way for that. Maybe Bob Miller, but that's probably just one out of a million. <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but I, I kind of doubt any money that would be in the Buffalo. Do you think that he, because it's been, in, like I said, in speculation since the Super Bowl, do you think he will be on the move again this offseason away from the Rams? Probably not. I mean, you know, you know, Sean McVay, he won a Super Bowl finally, young coach. He wants to keep the roster how it is, you know, bring the boys back to the band. I mean, Odell's a huge part of that offense. I mean, him and Matthew Scott, they had a great connection. You know, Odell did get himself injured midway, but yeah, I'm telling you right now, he comes back, he's going to have a hell of a year. I mean, the Rams are built to compete in the NFC West division. For a long time, despite Kyler Murray, despite the idea that you know San Francisco is going to come back, people are giving Robert or Trey Lance. Odell is probably the best scenario that he can find himself in. Because going to the AFC, I mean, the Bills are phenomenal squad. You know, Josh Allen, no one denies his talent, but you got to go through the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, hell, when you look at the entire AFC West right now, I mean, Buffalo might have a hard time even making it out the division. I mean, the divisional of the playoffs. Yeah. So, I'm telling you, Odell, he wants to go to another green, he's got to stay in the NFC. Yeah, and let me tell you, like, he he had struggled for a bit due to injuries, but last season, he I think he did pretty decent. I mean, he had five touchdowns. I, I think his production w- was decent, and I think he's, he's kind of trying, he's getting close to the level that he was at. I mean, he had a touchdown in the Super Bowl, um, like you said. So I think if he stays put, I think he has a level to, to uh, the potential to reach that level and where he was at before, you know, all of these injuries plagued him. Um, Jonka, what, what do you think about Odell? Do you think that he should stay in L.A. or do you think he should be on the move to try to find a contender he can be a part of? Um, I don't know if L.A. would resign him just because. Maybe he would, but... But because of this injury now, they suffered in the Super Bowl, the torn ACL, I think. That's what it was. Maybe he could stay. I, w- I would offer him just because he won it with you, you know. But if you were to go somewhere else, and I know he's always wanted to play with Tom Brady. And um, and Chris Godwin is out for the Buccaneers, so that's a roster spot that's open for the meantime. 
But the thing is that he's also Oda is still injured. Yeah. So, so as of right now, a team would have if a team's gonna sign him, they would have to risk they would have to know that he won't be able to play until further into the season. You know, who knows he, he would be rusty and coming off the injury, so it could rupture again. So you need to be very careful on how much you're going to offer this player because it is old though. He's going to want plus $20 million or a year. So that could screw you up in the, in the cap. I'll tell you what. I'm no longer picking him up in my fantasy, to be honest with you. I'm telling you, bro. Deontay Johnson from the Steelers. He's going to go off this year. Oh, my gosh, man. I can't. Like the Steelers, I think that, you know, Johnson's a great wide receiver, but the fact they changed the, they, they changed the field. I can't support that franchise anymore. They got rid of Heinz Field. That's what I, I was about to bring field. that up. Like, you know, I'm not I'm not with all these historic names, Dan's. Now change, like, dude, they got rid of American Airlines Arena at, to FTX. Like, that will forever be American Airlines Arena with all the history there. Like, now Heinz Field are gone? Like, how are you going to change Heinz Field? That was historic. I would rather see these old stadiums be renovated or made new and not just let's build a whole brand new stadium across the street. Exactly. Exactly. You know what they need to do? Bring back the Orange Bowl. I don't know how they're going to do it because I know it used to be where Martin Park is right now. Or Top of the Park. Top of the Park. You've got to make it orange. The Orange Bowl has got to be played there and you better have UM as the home team 24-7 at that stadium. All right, the Orange Bowl's got to be back in Miami. The, same. Back in Miami. the plans are for Tropical Park. Tropical, Tropical Park? I mean, then again, you know. By the Palmetto? It's hard. It's hard even building that, in that real estate. You know what I mean? you got a lot of people out here. So. I so just can't imagine, right. man. Like, yeah, you got the Palmetto right there, but I just can't imagine the traffic on Bird Road. Oh, oh boy. I see it. man. That is going to be insane. They would have to make some kind of highway or a special exit for it. Got to. Maybe even something that just plops you right there in the front door and just, you know. But I think they could solve that issue if, I know this is going into like more government stuff, but like, make it, since they said they're going to have a lot of parking spaces. So if you have a lot of parking spaces, the traffic should flow easier. Okay, park and get out, you go, next person. So it should be easy enough to get in. And, part, and Tropical Park does have a lot of space. We don't even make a stadium, so. It does. I mean, as long as you don't touch the mecca of uh, high school football over there in South Florida. So oh, that's out. Like that's out. Yeah, that's out. Yeah, it's out. What do you mean it's out? What do you mean They're taking that out, and then they're going to bring the baseball fields on the, in one of the corners of the stadium. I, I'll send you the plans. I'll send you the plans. Oh, oh my God. Hey, he, was in the, hey, he was in the helicopter this morning. He flew over the park. Yeah. So again, so you're trying to tell me the Orange Bowl is already gone. They're gonna get rid of the Mecca? Are you serious? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's the Mecca. I mean, I know it's important. I think yeah, it's like there, North Miami. I mean, that's like the best South Floridian football place you gotta go to. You remember Trask Powell? No. That one, I'm always gonna be remembered. I used to run track around that field, man. That's that's the mecca right there, Travis Powell. The right. <laughs> now that's a good field. As long as they keep that one, I guess I'll be happy with it. But I mean, they just gotta keep the stadiums as it is. I mean, even going back to the Heinz Field one, I mean, that Ketchum bottle, I saw a video. It got brought down. That was I'm not even from the Pittsburgh area, but that was depressing to see. That was like, man, this is a pain, you know. Pick up front. I'm a barbecue sauce. Okay, whatever that that means to this conversation. Heinz ketchup. Anyways, <laughs> uh, any more other football news that you guys have uh, impact at this moment, other than that, that little OPJ hoax that occurred? And um, uh, for, for what I know, because uh, I was watching a little bit of the SEC media days, you know, I did stuff as podcasting. That's probably one of the best things about, you know, the things that are going on right now. But let me tell you, Lane Kiffin of Ole Miss, you know, the head coach of the Rebels, 
you just said something really interesting. I, I, I'm pointing off the quote right with me, but what I took away from his media days was that specifically he was talking about NIL in the sense of those with the most money are most able to get the best players. And the fact that college people have gone to that point, and again, yeah, I mean, this is the first day of SEC media days, so we're going to be hearing this a lot more out of those head coaches. I mean, to come, I think tomorrow, I think Nick Saban is going to talk. And then I think the last day of Thursday will be uh, you know, Kimbo Fisher, so. NIL is in full swing right now. It's talking season. I mean, it's talking season in football, in college. So, I mean, Blaine Kiffin, though, I mean, he's, he's definitely an interesting coach. And, and for the Rebels themselves, I mean, because they are that, you know, the University of Mississippi. But over Mississippi State, it would be really interesting to see what they do in NIL. Um, I know we're talking about football, but supposedly I've been hearing rumors that supposedly Juan Soto might. The Yankees are trying to get Juan Soto, and then maybe Aaron Judge has split the the contracts because they're both looking for an extension. So they're, they're, they're thinking about ma- making it work, bro. That would be that's nuts. Funny. That's just funny to me because you you come on, Jonka, you're smarter than this. You know Aaron Judge good and well hell ain't gonna share with nobody. <laughs> I mean, technically, he already signed a one year contract for this for this coming year. He has to sign the con- the extension for for next season. So they could sign Soto right now. I they I'm, hoping, to. I'm hoping they don't do a 15 year deal, man. Because no, I'm pretty sure about that. Man, 15 years? That's not the way it is. I think I'm not going to even sign the B1 place for 15 years, especially in DC. No offense to the district. <laughs> but hey, so we know Soto coming to Miami. You know, we got Jazz. You know, we got some sandy beaches. And a whole lot of fun for baseball. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some of Miami, see, it could be a real thing. I can see him in Miami, that ass. I could see it. Yeah, it's a, it's a possibility. We're on the ride, man. Go spin. I would buy that jersey. Oh, that's all that money you lost to the Celtics. Nah, no, nah, I can't be. Only a quarter. I lost a couple more. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I remember that, Janka? Celtics fans love to talk about quarters. Oh. <laughs> yeah, talking about who win quarters. Hey, I'm just saying, man. If it wasn't for that third quarter, that first game. He's <laughs> <laughs> still not over it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, still not yeah. over the Eastern Conference Finals, even though he made the finals. Just a small grudge, you know. Well, let's get to the last topic of uh, the evening. Uh, man, there's been a lot of rumors on this one, too. Uh, it's a lot of traction on both, but... And this is in the soccer now, but is Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi probably the two greatest players, not only of his generation, but of all time? Are they both on the move soon to new clubs? Look, we know Cristiano Ronaldo's situation in Manchester United. He made that return, uh, but to be honest, it looks like now he's been contacting every single club in the sphere of Europe to see who come save him from Manchester United. And we just know that Messi's contract after the end of this year uh, with PSV uh, expires and there's a lot of talk that uh, he's coming to enter Miami into Major League Soccer. Um, he, that hasn't been denied, but it hasn't been confirmed either. Uh, that's what they have on Messi, but on Ronaldo, um, there was talks of him going to Bayern Munich, but Bayern said no. They were just Ronaldo's salary. They weren't going to take on Ronaldo's salary. Uh, there was talks of Ronaldo to PSG. That was never a thing. Uh, Ronaldo to Chelsea. That never gained traction either. And the new one today, which was shocking, was that Cristiano Ronaldo uh, convinced Diego Simeone, the coach of Atletico de Madrid, to sign him, which he would go back to Madrid to play for one of Real Madrid's rival team. I don't know how factual this is, because remember when he was going back to England, there were so many sources saying that he was set and ready to sign with Manchester City, which is United's rival. And then that never happened, and he himself said, oh, I would never sign with City. Like, I would never do that to United. So, like, 
it's the same thing. Would he join Atletico and do that to Real Madrid? I don't know, but like I just think he's desperate at this point to get out of Manchester. Yeah, but I'm telling you right now, I really want to see him back in La Liga. Back in Spain, I don't even care what it is, you know what I mean? Real Madrid, Atletico, it can even be, you know, something near the shore. I don't care. I just want him back in Spain playing soccer. But uh, um, for the messy part, I mean, again, you know, it's really hard to leave PSG. You know, you got, you know, Mbappe, Neymar, but, you know, you could come over and play with a couple of real legends, you know, Campania, Iguain. So, you tell me right now, Inter Miami, top three, top three on his radar right now. That's what I'm seeing right now. Okay. Poor Jumper goes, listen, and I addressed this on my Twitter last night. <sighs> I, mean, I had to take a deep breath for this one. <laughs> Into Miami fans, and before I spill into the fans, Gonzalo Higuain is still the most experienced and knowledgeable player on the Inter Miami roster. Yes, you know, yes, I do think he needs to retire, but he's still the most knowledgeable and experienced on the roster. And this guy, the last two games for Inter Miami, has scored off the bench making a difference. He's been the most creative player on the field and he made MLS team of the week. My point to this is Inter Miami fans, this season, with the rival of Campana, have treated Gonzalo Higuain so poorly that it's almost hypocritical that with the last two games, we're all cheering for him. They're all on top of their feet screaming for him, and these are the same people who were calling him fat, who were calling him other names, who were booing when he was getting subbed on to a game. I think that's classless to do to somebody who's had a heck of a career that Gonzalo's had, and the last two games that saved your butt you know, and had played very good performances. And on top of that, in the reel that we posted on our Club Talk Sports Instagram, it's shameful that with all the people that we have in this city that enjoy soccer, I get it. It's been raining because it's summer. I get it. The stadium is far in Fort Lauderdale, but then there's no reason for us, for the last two weeks, and I'll say a majority of the season, but consecutively the last two weeks, to be dead last in Major League Soccer for attendance with only 10,000 people. There is no excuse for that. I get it also, the team hasn't been performing the best for the last few years. I get it. But there is, with the amount of soccer fans there are in this city, there is no excuse for that. And tomorrow when they're playing Barcelona, we guarantee we're sold out, but I guarantee you we're sold out of a bunch of Barcelona fans. All right. Um, for the talks for Messi, I know I'm most likely, if I'm in Messi's head, I would like, if he's going to finish his career, most likely he's going to finish his career in Barca. But we know the situation in Barca, why he can't. And plus Barca is like $1.4 billion in debt. Which, by the way, before you continue that, they signed Robert Lewandowski. And yeah. we were talking about it today with my friends at soccer. I don't know where the hell they found this money, but we're just going to keep that quiet. I don't know where they got it. Hey, I think, I don't know how they got him either. But if they didn't sign him, in a couple of years, if this continues and the deck gets bigger, I feel like FC Barcelona might not even be a thing anymore. Would be. Because at some point, how are you going to pay it off? How are you going to pay it off? If I'm Barca, I would trade Lewandowski and some extra players for Ronaldo just to bring up ticket sales or something. Maybe to pay off the debt. Okay, 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 okay. No, I know that won't happen, but I know that won't ever happen. But for Ronaldo, I think you said that to a Real Madrid fan is blasphemous. Blasphemous. Do you know who you're talking to? 
Yes! Amora, apparently! Hey! So I'm talking to Amora. Okay, got it. Uh, and for Ronaldo, I would like to see him in Chelsea. I think, I think, I would like to see him in Chelsea, to be honest. I think he would look good in a Chelsea trade. But playing, playing in MLS, which he said he'd never do, to be honest. Ronaldo said he would never come to Major League Soccer. Okay, so that's off the board, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is so, that he has so many, like, he's been every kind of a lot of places already, you know, Sporting Lisbon, Manchester United, Real Madrid, Juventus, back to Manchester. And there's only so many, you know, few places that could afford and take on his salary. What's his salary? A lot. <laughs> I don't know, head, but it's a lot. Yeah, but let me uh, tell you, though, if he ever even decided to go to MLS, if he touches the state of California and any of those teams in Los Angeles, I will be so mad. I don't know what's going on, but there has to be a quote unquote tampering going on because <laughs> I mean, the players coming to Los Angeles are ridiculous. From Galaxy to LAFC, it's like. I don't understand oh. players that go to California and then they like, okay. Why would you go to California and pay the ridiculously, ridiculously high taxes? When you go to ridiculously high taxes or, or Florida, and you get no tax on your income, I they don't. Want, you were all the stars that they want to be in LA. I oh. have stars. They didn't play the stars, stars, stars. And when they play with the stars, they start losing. They start to complain and they report to trade. I don't know. I just want. I just want to see this. The little man wins. I want to see Cincinnati FC v talk about Ronaldo possibility. That's what I want. I want natural I want natural in Cincinnati in somehow, some way, you know, uh, the revolution New England will be a part of it, but put Ronaldo, put Ronaldo in the northeast central of the central part of the United States. I want to see yeah. him alive in those places. No, so we're not going to start it. Start it. Are you going to be in Cougar Whitecaps? <laughs> What up in Canada? What up in Canada? Oh my God! Man. I don't know, but I mean, either that he's 50 years old, 60 years old, hell, 70 in a wheelchair, come on the bench in Cincinnati. I love you. I just, I'm just dying for that Cincinnati and all those people. Before we end this show, before we end this episode, because I just had to bring this up now because you said old. I saw last night the last uh, Rocky Balboa movie when he fights this guy, Jason Dixon. Mm-hmm. Bro, he was so old, <laughs> so old, and then like the the images that they get of him being punches don't help him either. Like they pause it, and it just looks horrible. And here's the thing with Sylvester Stallone: I love the guy, great actor, he makes great movies. But like, I don't know what it is, but when he got old, now it looks like he's like punched all the time without even being in a fight. <laughs> Can I have the spaghetti? <laughs> oh, man, you can't even do it like that. Nah, but, but yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, I mean, too many takes in Rocky 1, you get them getting worse after Rocky 2. <laughs> and you gotta take the hits. Bro, bro. And those, those are real hits. Like, in the, in the filming, like, bro, I'm sorry. That's like, that's like concussion 2.0. Oh, are you saying like that, retake. Are you saying, what you're saying is that in a couple years from now, Michael B. Jordan is going to be as busted as Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. All right, so why, why, why is it? No. I don't know. They kind he of does more movies. Yeah. Do you think? Do you actually think Michael B. Jordan is going to look like Stallone? Do you actually think that? I think there's probably some like Botox issues going on there. You don't think in the, in the three oh, movies right now they used any CGI? <laughs> I don't know, man. Like I know I saw for the that big punch scene. You didn't have to get hit. Yeah, but for yeah. most of them, it's just it's just they take a jab and then you just pretend to go back. I just, you know, hit. Naka, I just know about sports. I'm not Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> I went on for money, bro. It's just I just saw the movie last night and it was just very. Uh, I was like, man, this guy is old. <laughs> yeah, man, he's just he's just been taking the hits, and that's that's all about. He's been taking Bobby. the hits and keep going. His body even looked like when he took off his shirt, the fight was like all, like he was muscled, but it was like all wrinkly at the same time. It was bad. Um, anyways, guys, great show. Uh, I appreciate everyone tuning in. As always, this was 56. It's getting crazy each day. 
or each week we inch closer to 100. Uh, I think for that one, I'll take a shot of tequila on camera. Uh, but again, we appreciate you guys tuning in uh, week in, week out. The work of Brandon, Giancarlo, our website, all the articles that we do and our, our social media. Keep in tune to that with all the news and the games. And uh, again, we appreciate you guys. We hope you guys have a great rest of the week. We'll see you guys next week.